I finally bought myself a mini lathe and today I'll show you how I machined a nozzle for a 3D printer with it that has a tiny 400 micrometer bore in the front. After that we'll test how it prints and cut it open to take a look at the inside finish. Let's find out more. Guten Tag everybody, I'm Stefan and welcome to CNC Kitchen. Squarespace sponsored a part of this video. Creating your own beautifully looking website is so easy and you can try it out yourself by visiting squarespace.com slash CNC kitchen. Well, it finally happened and I bought myself a mini lathe after desiring one for years. You ask why? Well, that's also what my wife asked. I regularly have projects in my mind, for example, special nozzles for the filler extruder and that would require such a tool. I desired having a lathe at my disposal because this is, in my opinion, one of the most honest ways to machine metal. It's such a pleasure to dive your tool into the material, adjust the pressure with your hand and just feel the metal being peeled off. Probably also one of the reasons why I'm currently not planning to convert it to CNC. Or what do you think? I don't have a lot of space and it had to go down into my basement. So the mini lathe, in my case the Seek SC2 with a 500 watt motor and 400 mm distance between the centers was the machine of choice. I bought mine from a local vendor that also just imports them, but I hoped for more quality control on their side. The lathe was around 1000 euros delivered plus another 500 for additional tools and accessories. You can get similar models cheaper, but this one at least came with all metal gears and a tailstock with a quick lock. Even though I didn't do any real modifications, I still took it apart, cleaned all the ways and put it back together and adjusted the gib strips. The only thing I really changed is adding a multi-fix tool post and this thing is a piece of beauty and worth every penny. So I had it for a good two weeks and seriously enjoy using it. I'm not a trained machinist and the last time I was working on a lathe was 13 years ago. To learn using one of these machines again, I thought it might be interesting to try to machine a 3D printer nozzle because it has a lot of features that are a bit challenging and a good way to learn. Most notably the 0.4mm hole in the front. I'll be using the E3D V6 nozzle design but chose an older version of the drawing that doesn't have the 60 degree taper on the inside because I don't have a tool for it. I'd be interested to know from an experienced machinist if that could be done by just grinding a drill bit to that tip angle. The old design uses a step bore which is not perfect for the flow but will probably still give us 95% of the performance. I did a quick design from the original in Fusion 360 to create another drawing that had all the dimensions that were interesting for me and also important for machining, especially the depth of the bores measured to the tip of the drill bit. Alright, so let's get to the lathe. I'm using brass for the nozzle, to be more precise MS58 or a brass with 39% zinc and 3% lead which is probably the most common brass alloy and well suitable for this application due to its good thermal conductivity and machinability. Since I was lazy and wanted to save myself the step of later milling the flats, I directly purchased 7mm hex stock. Since it wasn't that long, I didn't bother cutting it off a bit and directly put it into a 3 jaw chuck. I figured that I would need two setups for machining the nozzle. We'll make the M6 thread and the inner bores in the first one and then turn everything around and machine the tip as well as the tiny nozzle bore. Oh, and if you enjoy my videos, then please leave a like, consider subscribing and make sure that you have selected the notification bell. For the first operation, I'll be using a 1.5mm wide high speed steel parting tool to create the thread relief. I locked the carriage into place with a half nut lever while the feed rod was disengaged. I first faced the stock off to have a reference surface and zeroed the digital hand wheel dial. Then I moved the tool to the 7.5mm mark, machined away the hex, zeroed the crossfeed hand wheel dial, measured, machined away more and checked the final dimension. With this high speed steel parting tool I had to go quite low in terms of RPM to get a good cutting result. 
The 7.5 millimeters need to be pretty precise because they form the reference dimension for the second setup. And if they are off, the length of our small 0.4 millimeter bore might be off, causing non-optimal flow. Next, we need to get the threaded section to size. And for that, I used a regular left-handed cutting tool with a carbide insert. Many claim that the mini lathe is not made for carbide tooling because carbide needs high cutting speeds and a stiff machine, but so far it worked pretty well for me and didn't require me to learn grinding my own tools from high speed steel. I turned down the hex so that I was able to measure the part and then remove the rest of the material. Slightly deeper the edge of the relief with this tool as well. Next, we use a square insert for machining the chamfers. I added a small chamfer at the hex, just for visuals. Then, I slightly touched the edge for zeroing and machined a nice big chamfer. For the threads, we have two options. The first and easy one that works with these small threads is using a regular thread cutting die and a tailstock die holder. This contraption provides you with an easy way to align the die with your workpiece. The holder is rotatable and free to move on its axis. You start the lathe at a low RPM, hold the die in your hand until you reach the end of the thread and then just let it go. Perfect threads in a matter of seconds. The more advanced, versatile and in my opinion also most satisfying way is to use a threading tool. Here you lock the rotation of the chuck to the movement of the carriage by gears in the back that connect to the feed rod. By selecting the specific combination of gears, this results in 1mm of feed per rotation of the spindle, just as we need it for our M6 thread. So we engage the half nut, slowly cut one pass, retract the tool a little and move it back in reverse. The first pass is a scratch pass, on which I check the pitch with a pitch gauge to make sure that I selected the right combination of gears. Cutting threads this way might be a tedious process, but I find it oddly satisfying. The deeper we get in the thread, the more material the tool cuts. I only took shallow passes and used the spring pass from time to time and plenty of cutting oil. You could check the thread with special tools, but since I don't have those and precision in this case isn't crucial, I just used a nut as a gauge and got deeper and deeper until I could screw it on. The last operation of this first setup is drilling the deep holes. For this I put a drill chuck in the tailstock and started with a center drill that is rigid and doesn't wobble around and will create a pilot hole for the longer and more flexible drill bits. So the stepped hole needs to be reasonably precise. The tailstock has a scale on it, but that's more for rough depth estimation. I didn't know any better and made myself a makeshift DRO by clamping a small 3D printed part to the quill and using that as a stop for a dial gauge. To find the zero depth, I used the thickness gauge between the drill bit and the part to measure where I was. First, I drilled the 1.5mm hole and regularly retracted the bit to clear it from the chips. The 2mm hole was way easier to machine because the amount of material that is removed was quite low. Since this operation is crucial for the interior surface finish, I still cleared the chips as regularly as possible because I wanted them to rub against the surface as little as possible. And I think this way, you don't even need to ream the bore. In the end, I just added a small 60 degree chamfer with a chamfer bit before I parted the nozzle blank off with around 2 tenths of a millimeter extra in length. Mounting the breast parts on its threads in the 3 chow chuck would ruin it, so I threaded a piece of aluminum rod that's then mounted in the chuck and in which I screw the nozzle blank. A collet chuck would also have been an option, but that would have required me to change it. I faced the part off and had to slightly readjust the tool height because it left a small bit of material where we soon want to drill with our tiny drill bit 
for which we need a perfectly flat surface. For machining the tip, I again use the square insert tool that we also use for the chamfers. The drawing asks for a 70 degrees tip, but the standard orientation of the tool is 90 degrees. I could rotate the whole compound, but that's a pain on the mini lathe. Instead, I move the tool holder just one set of teeth further on the multi-fix tool post, which is 9 degrees instead of the 10 degrees required, but I guess good enough for our application. I zeroed the compound dial at the face and the cross light roughly at the hex. I moved the tool 2mm in and then plunged into the hex to create the tip. This operation is something that this lathe doesn't like, because at some point a considerable portion of the tool is in touch with the workpiece, creating huge cutting forces. Still, it made it with an acceptable surface finish. Measuring the diameter of the tip is quite tricky, but I did my best to stay within the tolerances. At last, we have to drill the orifice with the tiniest drill bit I've ever used. I made a pilot hole with the smallest center bit I could find, but still had to pay attention that I only just slightly touched the tip, because the center bit has a diameter of 0.5 mm, which would result in a stepped tip and wouldn't be optimal. For these drilling operations, I ran the machine at its maximum 2500 RPM to keep the cutting speed high, but it would have been better to increase it even more. Next, I mounted the 0.4mm drill bit in the drill chuck, made sure that the ways were clean so that the tailstock is centered and just went for it. We have some slight wobble in the beginning, but quickly start drilling. And there we have it, the finished nozzle. Doesn't look too bad, does it? Performing the operations in this order left no burr in the nozzle orifice and left us with a nice and sharp corner. But the proof of the pudding is in the eating and I've therefore printed a test part with it and also cut one open to take a look at the internal surface finish. To dissect it, I put it into a collet block which I mounted in a vise on my CNC router and just machined half of the nozzle away in 0.5mm increments using a 6mm 3 fluid carbide cutter. So let's take a closer look at it. Surface finish is not perfect, but I think very acceptable and way better as I have seen it on nozzles in the past. The depth of the internal bores were a bit too shallow, which leaves us with a nozzle bore that is a bit too long. Still, I think a very acceptable result for my skill level and the cheap machine I made it on. I machined several nozzles the last days, so let's test another one how it prints. I removed the genuine E3D nozzle on tool 2 of my E3D tool changer, replaced it with my own and printed two 3D banshees side by side. First, the one with the genuine E3D nozzle is finished, then the tools are changed and we print with my own self-made nozzle. At first glance, and even on closer inspection, there isn't any significant difference besides the color visible. And I'd say, my nozzle didn't perform any worse. If that's due to my machining skill, or because a 3D printer nozzle doesn't need to be perfect, is a question for another video. But what do you think about this project? And what are your ideas and designs you'd like to see tested in the future? Should I do more videos on the mini lathe? Let me know down in the comments. The write-up of this video with additional images can be found on my website, which is cnckitchen.com, thanks to today's video sponsor Squarespace. Squarespace is the all-in-one platform to build a beautifully looking online presence. Launching your own website using one of the professional templates that Squarespace provides and then customize it to your needs is super simple. Even though it might not seem like it, but I'm the king of procrastination. Ask my wife. For years, I wanted to create a dedicated website for this channel, but always hesitated, since I was afraid that it became too difficult and too time consuming. Having Squarespace as a channel sponsor motivated me to give it a try, and with their easy online editor, I was able to create the first version of cnckitchen.com in not even an hour. You can also try it out totally free for two weeks by visiting squarespace.com slash cnckitchen and even get 10% off when you're ready to launch by using code cnckitchen. Squarespace Analytics tells me that a notable portion of my visitors are using mobile devices. 
That doesn't worry me because all Squarespace templates are optimized to look amazing regardless where you're browsing. So even if you're on the road, you can read all of my articles in their full glory using your smartphone or tablet. You can also create your own professional online presence for your business or just share your ideas with the world by browsing squarespace.com slash CNC kitchen. Thank you Squarespace for supporting my channel and share my work with the world. Thanks for watching everyone. I hope you're all doing well. If you found this video helpful, then leave a like, share it with the community and make sure that you're subscribed for more. If you want to support my work, head over to Patreon, become a YouTube member or use the affiliate links in the description. Go check out my other videos if you currently have more time than usual and want to educate yourself. Stay healthy, auf Wiedersehen and I hope to see you in the next one.